Our first scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The second reading is from John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. This is from Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but, ha but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. May God bless this reading of the word.
Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. The lovers, the dreamers, the ones who are able to love as God has loved us. That, I believe, is where we find the rainbow connection. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, it's Pi Day. Some of you might remember your math classes from high school. Some of you may still use Pi in your daily lives. That's P-I, the Greek letter, not the pastry. Some of you may have pastry in your daily lives too, and well, that's fine. I'm not a pastry fan, so you can have my piece as well. But pi, the Greek letter, is used in math for an irrational number. It's that constant which we use to determine the area or circumference of a circle. Pi r squared. But it's irrational. Pi has no end. It's a decimal that has no end and is no pattern. That seems a good way to describe love. Love isn't pie the pastry where there's a set circle and you can only cut it into so many pieces and that's it. Pie is the number, irrational, never ending. That's what we're called to be as people of God who have that irrational love for our neighbors, for ourselves, for the world. Because as John reminds us, for God so loves the world for God so loves the world. Irrational, unending, pie. But within the United Church and with other, within some other denominations that have been moving towards living out our belief that all gender identities, all sexual orientations are equally beloved by God are equally created by God, are equal gifts from God. In a world where there are still many who will call gender identities or sexual orientations that deviate from the norm, that vary from what we are, have been taught is normal. Normal is a setting on a dryer. There are still people who say those who don't follow those norms are somehow flawed, or incompatible, or unacceptable. Unacceptable, not unacceptable, unacceptable. We, as people of faith, stand up and say, no, those are all gifts from God. Those are all people created in God's image, whom God looks at and says, behold, it is very good. For God so loves the world. For God so loves the world. That passage from John does include that very famous verse. John 3.16, which has so often been used as a shorthand to explain Christian faith. For God so loves the world that God sent God's only begotten Son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And it's wonderful. It's that reminder of God's love. Nowhere in that is there a word about the cross, about sacrifice. It's a word about love and following the king of love. But I've always thought the, to read that without verse 17 misses something. Because verse 17 says, Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. We're really good at condemnation as humans, at judgment, at setting limits about what is acceptable and what's not. John 3, 16 and 17 tell us that God loves the world and God does not come into the world to condemn the world but to redeem it. So maybe we should get off the condemnation kick and look a bit more at what it means to be redeemed and saved.
It's a challenge. It's really quite easy to judge. It's quite easy to say, ah, oh, that's wrong. I disagree with that. We do it without even thinking. We do it automatically. But God calls us to open our hearts, our eyes, our ears, to understand the irrational nature of God's love for the world that God created and calls very good. God calls us to open our hearts, or open our understandings, broaden our expectations about what is acceptable in God's sight. It's irrational. It's pie. And once we've done that, once we move along that journey, because we may never be fully open in our hearts, there may always be those people who we lock away and say, yeah, I realize God loves them. I realize they're beloved children of God. But given my choice, I'll just stay away from them, thanks. But as we move farther into opening ourselves and becoming more welcoming, more affirming, more accepting, more understanding that these are all beloved children of God, that's not enough. That's a wonderful thing to do. It's not enough. Because we still live in a world where there are many other voices that are telling them they're wrong. They're unacceptable. They're abominations. They're flawed. So we need to take the next step in Pi. Because Pi for this day can also mean public, intentional, explicit. When we proclaim that all gender identities and all sexual orientations are gifts from God, when we proclaim that all people, no matter what their gender identity, no matter what their sexual orientation, no matter what their race, no matter what other criteria we have for locking them in a category, our beloved children of God we have an opportunity, we have a responsibility to stand up and say, this we believe. To say so publicly, not just within our own circles, but to say so publicly. To say we stand with these people whom others are putting down. And we defend their right to be who God has created them to be. To be intentional about it. To not just, well, if it happens, it happens, but if not, oh well. But to make an intention to say, I'm going to do this. And to do it on purpose. Even when it's hard. Because sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it means putting yourself also in the crosshair. That's why for 30 years now, many, many a United Church person has been told, well, there was one person I remember who had known me for like 10 minutes at a time said, oh, the social club. Many United Church clergy have been told, well, you don't belong in ministerial because you don't follow the true faith, largely because of our public and intentional statements around orientation and gender identity. And the E, explicit. We have to make it clear. Not use code language. Not co coach it in euphemisms or in don't let those who hear understand. We need to make it clear. These people, all people, all genders, all orientations, our beloved children of God, sexuality is a gift from God, however it manifests itself in ways that are non-abusive and non-hurtful to others. Pi. That's what we're called to be. To love irrationally as God has loved us. And to be public about our belief that all people are God's beloved children. 
to be intentional about saying it openly and publicly, and to be clear, to make it explicit. Right now, we're on a, a journey to determine if we want, if St. Paul's is ready to declare itself an affirming United Church under the guidelines set out by Affirm United. And how we do that is still being determined. The Affirming Task Group is meeting with people once a month on, currently on Wednesday evening, the second, second Wednesday of the month. There was some discussion in, our session, in the session yesterday about whether we might want to change that so that we have different times for different people who can't make, necessarily make on a Wednesday night. And so we will move into this. It may mean we put a rainbow flag or a rainbow flag sticker or something on our windows, on our building. We started when we showed up at the Pride Festival for the last couple of times it happened. And we'll show up again when it is able to happen again, is our intention. It shows up when we passed, when you passed, it was before I came, a marriage policy allowing for the blessing of same gender relationships. And when you get your annual report, you will note that we had one wedding in 2020. That one wedding was in fact a same gender couple. So I know Karen Scott was very pre pleased to be able to say that 100% of St. Paul's weddings last year we're part of our affirming ministry. 100% of one is fairly easy to get, but you know. We're called to be love irrationally and to be public about what we believe God is calling us to do and be. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Public, intentional, explicit. Let our light shine. May we be the city on a hill, showing people what God's love truly means. Amen.